Hi, George here. How are you doing today? Well, I'm doing pretty good, but I'm getting really hungry now. It's kind of late in the day and, and uh, yeah, the old stomach's growling and it needs food inside of it. But before I go, what I'd like to do is show you the Hamilton C2 transport ventilator that's made by Hamilton Corporation. So it's in the same family as the, the C5, G5 ventilator. Okay, so this is the C2 transport ventilator. I'm going to grab the camera off the tripod and let's take a look at the external components of this ventilator before we do a pre-use check. So I'm going to carefully grab the, tri the uh, camera off the tripod here. There we go. And let's take a look at the vent. Well, here's the user. Well, you can really see me good there, eh? There I am, and there I'm not. Here's the user interface right over here. There isn't really much to it. It kind of works the same way the other ventilators did as well. Important things, on off switch right over here. So that lock, uh, turns the device on and off. You've got a locking mechanism here for the next tab. A couple other tabs here for different features. Rotary knob for um, choosing what value you want your ventilation dynamic to be at. When you are happy with the value, just simply push that again to set it. Uh, screen is a touch screen as well. So when you turn the ventilator on, it'll give you all the display that you need to see and then it'll be a touch screen after that. If you come down to the this part of the ventilator, move that hose out of the way. Here's these ports again. So this ventilator has a uh, flow sensor at the patient Y, right over there. Okay, a little bit different than the other one, but functions the same. So these two tubings that are meant to make that flow sensor function, which are disposable, you make sure you hook them up to the appropriate color-coded outlet. So the blue one again. It, is for the blue tubing, the silver one is for the clear tubing, and this gold or copper one right over here, or bronze colored one, that is for the nebulizer. So if you want to run an internal neb to power a small volume neb, you'd hook the tubing up to here and then activate the feature in the mode of ventilation that you're in, and the ventilator will power the, mo the uh, small volume neb to deliver whatever aerosolized medication you want to deliver to your patient. This is where you hook the the uh, shortened tubing for the circuit to go to the humidifier. Right? So it's, there's your humidifier, trace it back. So this is your inspiratory outlet. And it kind of shows the diagram right over here, patient end, hook that up to the, the uh, patient inspiratory side. Okay. And then we follow the circuit all the way back to the patient via the patient Y. And here's that flow sensor. It's a little bit different than the other one that we showed you in the last video for the Hamilton G5. We'll take that flow sensor off, and I've got it in there pretty tight. There. It's a little bit different, right? Two different diameters, external diameters. This one here, it's made this way so that you always put this one into the patient Y connector. connector, connector. So tighten that up, make sure it's nice and tight. This part is meant to hook up to your tapered flex tube that goes to your closed suction system or whatever type of tubing you want to hook it up there, or it'll hook up to your test lung easily as well, or your plug for plugging off the circuit. The expiratory side of the circuit's right over here, the white tubing goes all the way back to the exhalation valve, and the exhalation valve is located right behind here. So to take the exhalation valve off, detach your circuit, like so, make sure it's kept in a safe area, grab this, turn it counterclockwise, that releases the locking mechanism, then you can pull the exhalation valve out, and there's the exhalation valve right over there. To put it back in, just simply line this up like so, place it back in, turn it to the right so it locks in there, and then reattach your expiratory limb of your circuit. And again, still make sure that that's nice and tight. All right, so that's the uh, circuit component. It's on this nice big stand right over here like so. Here's the base of the unit walking, sorry, locking wheels as well, so make sure your wheels are nice and locked in place. The ventilator doesn't move if you're not going on the transport. Support arm that's built in right over here and that's where it's meant to be built in so you'd have your water bag for the humidifier attached to there and then manipulate it so you don't have too much strain on this tubing right over here that goes to the humidifier so you can get water inside of there. On the ventilator itself, we'll go to the top now which we don't do on most ventilators. It's got a handle so it's meant to be portable. So if you needed to lift this up because it wasn't on a stand, you've got a handle here to lift it up by. If we go to the back of the ventilator, we'll go at the bottom, start at the bottom. Those two little round things right over there, and this bracket, 
and these uh, Velcro straps, that is meant for placing oxygen cylinders onto the uh, stand and then supporting them in place with those Velcro straps. Okay, so you can run oxygen off oxygen cylinders with a regulator with a 50 psi outlet on it and the ventilator will still work properly for you. Now if you look at the back of the ventilator moving up, here's our one power cord for um, operating the ventilator. So you have to plug this one in to have AC power, but there is a built-in battery pack so when you go on a transport uh, you don't have to have it plugged into power, it'll still in fact work off the battery. We've got one high pressure hose and that's only for oxygen and it's color coded white because in our area here in Canada and through most of the world it is color coded white in the United States it's color coded green. Okay, so if you're running this uh, ventilator off the tanks have your power your pneumatic hose here, your oxygen hose hooked up to your oxygen regulator on your oxygen cylinder. If not, you'd hook this up to the station outlet to supply oxygen to the ventilator. Okay. A couple other things, air intakes right over here, so we don't want to cover that up with anything, etc. And then it's just got this output port for, I think that's VGA or something. Not 100% sure. We don't really use that. That's more of a biomed thing. Support arm on this side. It's a pretty fancy support arm. Okay right over there and it just simply holds the circuit into place. So when you're circuiting this ventilator it's exactly the same as any other type of ventilator. The circuit is universal. It's the same for this type of humidification system. The only thing that's slightly different is where that exhalation valve is right over there and of course because it's a Hamilton it requires the flow sensor. All right and that's in essence the external features of this Hamilton C2 ventilator. There isn't really a lot to it and it's becoming one of the more popular transport ventilators that are being used in the uh, hospitals. All right, so I'm gonna put this back on the tripod. Hopefully it works. While I'm doing that, just wanna let you know that uh, if you got some value out of this video, please let me know, thumbs up. If you liked it, thumbs down. If you didn't like it, let me know how I can improve the video or I can make changes better for you. Uh, you the viewer and um, of course if you get a chance please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hope you have a great day. Now it's time to go get some supper.